London, and London Rebels. Rebels. <laughs> Hello, LDN RBS. It is five o'clock. Literally, we are here now. Everyone's in the room. Pulse the neater on the mic. We've got Havoc Hi on the guys. mic. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Guess who we have in the building? Sorry, sorry. No, let's let's wait. Let's wait. Guess who we have in the building? Guess who we again, have here again? God, God. It, I R. Think it is. M. Moses. Wow. In we have flesh. him here with us today. In the flesh. Let's just let's just put it in perspective now. Let's put it in perspective. Yeah. This is an award-winning. Wow. Award-winning. Multiple director. Oh, yeah. multiple. Let's, he let's is get out up straight here. Yeah. Exactly. Let's let him International. Speak for a second. Let's let him speak for a second. Yeah. Too. Right. R. M. Moses. You happy to be back? Yeah, I'm. I'm good. I don't mind the praise. You can. <laughs> you want us to keep on going. We can keep on going. Speak for yeah. themselves. I've been watching. <laughs> I've been watching ever since last time we spoke to you. Now, we were saying we, we wish you success. In that meantime, now you've gone and won awards. You've gone to America. I see you living life pretty much. Tell us about it. The last couple of months. Wow. Um. I was always planning to go to LA, and then I got the chance to work with Dijon. And he introduced me to Jennifer Freeman. And mm-hmm. I just wrote a script for them, and boom, we just uh, got to it. As soon as we got there, took a day, went mm-hmm. to Venice Beach, mm-hmm. uh, went to New York the week after, mm-hmm. and that's when I went to the Uptown Film Festival. Amazing. Uh, Signs of Silence, uh, one of the short films I've done, that got the uh, best screenplay and third place mm. best short film. I don't know wow. why I got third place. I'm gonna say it early. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Best I don't. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Yo, what what one? Well, can we just get some applause right there? Yeah, can let's get an applause. Get, it has to be applause. one of those manual applauses because obviously, <laughs> yeah. It's can we just get some applause in the studio right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, signs of silence. What did it? What did come first? Do you know? Don't know. You don't. Yeah, we don't. It's not relevant. It's a big film festival actually because um there was about uh eighty films on the line. Eighty films. Wow. Period of that's amazing wow. honestly now over the next hour we're going to delve into so much more because i feel like with someone like this in the building we need to delve into the mind we need to delve yeah. into mm. why he writes the way he writes <laughs> we need to delve into everything to do with him. gonna pick your brain pick your <laughs> brain he just smiles he's like hmm we'll see but as a whole we're going to get into a whole lot more and Right now, I wanted to ask him. We've been playing music for the last two hours. I want to ask him, what does he want to play? What music? What song can you read? You got one song, bro. One song. One shot on this ox. How deep is your database? Because wow, how, whoa. Okay, yeah. whoa, 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 dab, dab, dab. You trying to go underground? <laughs> Where are you trying to go, bro? Right on the computer now. <laughs> I was listening to Drake Controller on the way here. Controller mm. Drake. So let's just go over that. Let's just keep it fresh. Yeah. Let me see if I can find that for you guys quickly. Any questions that anyone here wanted to ask RM Moses? Yeah, actually, um, going back to what you said that you went to America and you wrote a script within a day, what is the thought process that you go through to make that happen in a day? Because not a lot of people can do that under pressure. Mm. Great question. Um, it depends. There was... At the time, I think it was December, and I, I wrote it. And it just depends on the circumstances and stuff. Sometimes, mm. when you're in like a, a really tough situation or something like that, your inspiration for writing can come so quick, and the the passion to write can come so fast and burn so fast. So yeah. once you get to it, it just comes quick. And is it almost like when you get an idea, you just have to go straight away and write it down? Yeah, I always feel like if you leave it too long, it just you won't get the passion back to write it again so mm. I always have this I, I even have stick it notes on my computer to make sure you know don't wait that's all the stick it notes say <laughs> don't wait um, uh, just keep keep going and and uh, just write when, when you feel the, the burn yeah that's amazing because not a lot of people can just write and keep writing some people like how do you go and look for a storyline that's the main because I see a lot of stories that are reproduced, reproduced. How do you try and make yours different to others? Most of it is, oh, well, now it is anyway. So yeah. um, I kind of found my niche in writing good dramas. And uh, I've got an ear for how uh, dialogue can be spoken. So I feel like now I, I, only, I only really write dramas and I know that's, that's my comfort zone. And I, I've gone out of my comfort zone to see how far I can actually go. But yeah. writing thrillers and horrors is just not my portion. So... 
I, just I did like right Sapiens there. though, the ending of that, because right, it was right. very mysterious. I was yeah. thinking, okay, so how is he going to switch it up from something that went from so normal mm. to now being sort of like a thriller, sci fi kind of. Of course, yeah, I thought yeah. that too, actually, when I heard yeah. it. Yeah. I was thinking, where did the smoke come from as well? <laughs> Fully. Yeah. That was so hard to film on the hill. We were, <laughs> it was in Birmingham and um, it's called the Malvern Hills. And anyone that knows Birmingham and the Malvern Hills, it's like a good 45 minute tr- trek up the hill. So when we got up there, it was windy and the microphone wasn't like, it just wasn't good. But we got we got our film in. We, there was actually um, about a minute and a half after they black out, mm. we had a sequence. And the, only the people that come to the premiere that we had last year I've seen it oh, okay. and it's when they get their powers and they have like a staff and there's all sorts of stuff going on but we cut it out because the visual effects kind of made it mm. less than what I thought the, the drama gave to it so, so are we going to see a part 2 though because I really really want to know what happens next I'm not going to lie to you yeah, yeah we, it did we, stop we, at a point where yeah. I was like mm, yeah, I, want, yeah, yeah. I want more <laughs> um, I want to see what they have like their powers what, what's yeah. going to happen we have a season 1 trailer drop in I think in December Okay. So um, the, that that would just show the direction in which we're taking Sapiens because the season we've got, the writing in it is I think it's, it's it's so good and it's it's not it's like I don't know for me it's like Misfits was one of the things I think I was telling you before yeah. Ty, like Misfits was one of the the groundbreaking sci-fi dramas for teens and youth growing of up mm. of and this Sapiens I want it to be about black youth as well as the whole sci-fi thing but you know linking the, the the black youth to sci-fi and having that niche would just boost everything now the, the writing's gonna be good in it as well, yeah so. yeah we already know when you write you can tell you really think about your films yeah you really you can tell every single part you put it together in a certain way but you know what rm moses requested controller said guess what we're gonna do we're gonna play controller mm-hmm. we're gonna get straight into it the main gist of this whole interview and couple minutes but yeah controller drake of paper with the names of the people who had him denied entrance to this year's wireless festival supposedly they thought there would be some trouble no comment well that's all the news i have for now join me in half an hour for more pulse search pulse 88 on tune in app or find us in all smartphone app stores number one for hip-hop and r&b is your favourite station. Pulse88.co.uk Are you ready? Shout out yourself, shout out yourself. They got tired, they got the rest of the crew inside the building. For sure. <laughs> so much to talk about. So much from start to finish, there's so much to talk about. But, let's talk about your journey in the last couple of months since we last spoke to you what do you say has gone on in the last couple of months how can you update on us Ugh, um there's so much even even right now like i always have i always tweet about having so much going on that my memory is just terrible i can't you know mesh it all take together track i keep track of certain films but um so far i think i've i've done about three films i've released about six or seven Amazing. this year i've got five more to go uh, until the end of the year um, and then we start on a feature film next year mm. which wow. is going to be good so. oh we need to get into this feature film we yeah. need to get into this because I'm interested to know what this feature film's about in general but um, let me think America how was that trip for you? that was it was eye opening um, I think the, the week that I was in New York when I got the awards I didn't expect to get the awards because I was even tweeting about it. It's like I went there with the ambition to go to the screening and I was wearing a tracksuit and I was shopping with me. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the guy saw me, uh, William, who organised it, the programmer, and he didn't know I was coming. So he was mad enthusiastic. He was like, oh, man, if you'd have told me, I'd have like, hooked you up with like, accommodation, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, listen, we have to stay, stay till afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I was with about five other English people. Yeah, like kind of like entourage, but my crew, like, yeah. was all come there to, to support and that. And they were just all gassing. It was like, oh my god, like he's he's gonna give you an award. Like you have to, you have to stay. And I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. And I was ready for it. So um, we went into the studio after the screening, sat down, and then we was in, <laughs> was in the front row. And then about ten minutes later, the whole st- 
studio was filled up with people in suits and wow. long trench coats. I was like, wow. I'm underdressed right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was just looking like a thug like, in Brooklyn. Do you know what I'm saying? In and then, Brooklyn. And then um, he, the, he started it off. He was like, oh, look, blah, blah, blah. Uh, third place, short films, Ira Moses, boom, go up. I was cool because nice. I expected it. Mm-hmm. And then I was sitting there, I was thinking, oh, this is taking so long. It's like 20 minutes <laughs> in the past. I'm like, I need to go, man. This is just long. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, like, signs of silence. Bam. I was like, oh, shit. Man, it's funny. That's mad. Like, yeah, I didn't e- expect it. Even last week, I was talking to a friend, and I was—I think it was a film called um, Babel, and it's about uh, um, someone that's deaf. Mm-hmm. And it brought me straight onto Signs of Silence. I wanted to think. I wanted to ask you what brought you to actually make that type of film because wow. it's made me think about it on a random day. So yeah. I want to know what made you brought what brought you onto that. I can't remember the the. The, the exact reason but I've always had this this idea that disabled people are kind of the only people left in society that are segregated so especially with deaf people we don't have the resources to communicate with them we don't we don't get taught in schools and stuff to have to do sign language but I think it should be an option to be able to do it because I would love to do sign language love yeah. it and um, you go about your train journeys and you see them communicating with other people who are deaf and you, you, you can't if, if there was something to happen like an emergency you wouldn't be able to communicate with them it's just one of the things but I feel like schools should have that accessibility for disabled people so um, this was just like a perspective thing where loads of people see deaf people and they know about deaf people but you don't really know how it is growing up mm-hmm. and, mm. and I know a couple of deaf people I don't know like personally at friends, friendship level but I've come across them and their stories are quite quite inspiring so yeah. this one was just about independence and love breaking down that uh, barrier with like the, the kind of what's the word universal language of love and and everything that comes with like just using your hands to speak so to communicate when you course. when you've done signs of silence i was so happy to see that because um, going back to you saying there's not a lot of people that communicate with disabled people they just kind of disregard them mm. and growing up I, my best friend from primary school was disabled and he couldn't talk and the only good thing about it is that they taught me how to sign language with him I don't remember it no more yeah. but at the time it, when I saw that I was like wow like people are actually acknowledging these type of like group yeah. of people do you know what I mean yeah, so I it was very important. good yeah, it's, it's important to, to know that you know, like when we're not in this, this little tunnel, like on our own journey, it's everyone's yeah. journey is inter- interconnect sometimes. So. so, do you think, yeah, in all of your films, you're trying to portray an underlying moral that people should really, really listen into or clock into? Yeah, I think, like I was saying, my, my kind of niche now is with this drama, and I always have something that carries the film, whether that that is like the reflection film that I've done. Um, that's about chronic illness. Yeah. Before he crashes, about marriage. Mm. So there's there's different things that carries the film that I wanna. I'm gonna ask a question it? about before we crash. Now I'm watching the film. You sent you sent it to me. I was I'm watching it. Way, yeah. yeah, and I was thinking to myself. Now wait, I recognise one of these people. Mm. This is one of the people I grew up watching. Mm. How did you meet Claire from My Wife and Kids <laughs> to get her in your film? Please tell Listen. me. Crush. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crush. I'll say it early. Uh, but this is what I'm saying. Like when that that new that, that week I was in New York and I got the awards and um, after I think it was, it was literally the, the night of the awards. I got home, I was in my bed and I was on the phone. I can't remember who I was on the phone to. And I got off and I got a notification on my Instagram from Megan Good and she like posted the film and. Oh, sorry, can we? Can we? Can we? I just don't know where this went. <laughs> no, we're, we're not going to skate past this one. No, we yeah. can't. No one randomly gets a DM. Yeah, yeah. So, did, did you say Megan Good? Megan Good. Let's did, give him. Let's did, give did, did you, <laughs> I'm giving you a hug. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's give him a chance to explain the story. Let's do this. No, and, this you, is details. I, I need details this of this one. one. Yeah, honestly, I saw that tear. I saw yeah, that tear. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't uh, worry. Oh. Yeah. So when I was in uh, New York, that's when it, it, I felt like raw. Like that was the moment. I was like, whoa. Like that's two of my childhood crushes that I used to watch on TV and movies. Oh. And you're thinking raw. Like, oh. like what's the what's the, you got served. Oh my Yeah, gosh. that was Come a banger. On. Yeah. So it's like, it's just one of those things you think, right, and I started pinching myself, and I was so happy. <laughs> if I wasn't staying with the guys I was staying with in, in New York, I would have cried my eyes out. If I was alone, I would have uh-huh. cried because that was so emotional for me. Where was you when you saw Megan Good do that? I was in bed, like, and then I screamed. I was like, ah! 
<laughs> I would have screamed too, to be like, honest. At first, did you yeah. think it was someone like their manager or something? No, no, nah, nah, yeah. at first, I thought it was fake. Like, person, I was sort of verification ticket. I was like, oh, okay, like 80,000. Uh, about the scream, was it a high pitch one? Was it one of them ones nah, with bass? High, high pitch, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't blame you. big booty mega, what do you expect? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so that's um, when, I, when I got to meet Claire. I say Claire. I, Claire you have I, to. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's just, it is what it is. It's I week. know, as a Jennifer, I guess. Okay, look, it's <laughs> done. Dab. You have to dab now. So, yeah. I don't even dab. You don't dab. dab. No. You're yeah, the prestige ones there. Man, so. I don't dab. Um, I, I remember opening the door to her and my heart was just thumping. And I, oh, I, I, I don't get starstruck over people. I, it's just not one of my things. But yeah. That, that was the first person. I opened the door and I was like, <laughs> I was like nah, boy. And I sat down with her and I spent the day with her and I got to know her and that was cool. Like it really opened my eyes to to know that she has a world, that like, she actually has a life. Uh-huh. Instead of me saying, Oh, that's that's Claire, that's my wife and kids. Like she just mm-hmm. came off set, that's what I think. Yeah. When I think of Claire, I just think, yeah, she just came off Did set. Did you call her Claire? On nah, 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 time. Nah, nah, nah. Like, I made sure like a day before. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know when you're practicing like Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah. But yeah. even so. Um, I wanted to ask you a question well I've got my tickets yeah. I'm just saying I've got my tickets yeah. yeah I know Lexi's got her tickets Nanita you got her tickets no I'm going to get one she's getting her tickets I don't know if anybody else has got any tickets but tell us about your premiere that is coming up next month uh, last year we had uh, October uh, Sapiens Baddies and Signs of Silence this year I have five films not three Damn. Um, all, all five are strong one in particular, the same way that Signs of Silence was like the standout film last year, I have a film called Book Trader. That's going to be, okay. in my opinion, it's going to be nominated for a BAFTA. Like it's, I like it's, the confidence. It's a solid, yeah. solid film. Mm-hmm. And I, you know what I mean? I, I don't, because I've done so many films that I know when something's going to hit a certain level. So yeah. I, I Can you tell us sure about what this film is about? I was reading The Alchemist for the first time, like, that's a good two weeks ago. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. yeah. I see that got yeah. a lot of uh, a good reaction in the room. <laughs> but yeah, and um, there was there was a line in it. It was like a little paragraph, and um, he was the, the shepherd was saying something about uh, if worse comes to worse, he can sell his sheep for money, and he's got his his jacket that he can sell, or, and he's got a book that he can trade for a bigger book. Okay. So I, it, at, at first I was like, oh, that's, that's really poetic, and then it just inspired something. And um, I met a girl in New York at a film festival called Maria Sten and uh, she was recently in um, Straight Outta Compton and I, I never knew because she was really humble when she first met me yeah. and I just thought she was another actress and then I worked Straight Outta Compton and I saw her like it was just random I was like oh my god that's, that's that girl and then like she's coming to London next week and we're, we're doing a film so I was I was just trying to find something to write for her and then this film come about through Reading the Alchemist and it's, it's just about a homeless guy who has uh, a really big collection of books mm. and this one woman comes and wants to trade his books for boots or blanket mm-hmm. and he, he his whole ideal is that each book is a journey and each book ha- it has a, a major part in his life and there's even a, a big monologue from Damien who's the lead character <clears throat> um, it's about what's it about uh in every one of his books, he's created a life. He's created something that gives him escape. So he has a perfect wife. He has children. He has he's climbed the mountains of Everest and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So he's very like he doesn't really want to give his books away, even yeah. though the books are not as good as a pillow or a blanket. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's that conflict. But at the end, it's, it's a really emotional story. So I've yeah. got a little, I've got a little, sly little question. Sorry to cut you off there. But I've got a little question here for any actor or actress that is probably listening to this thinking, I want to talk to this man. I want to get involved in these films. Yeah. I want to be in these films. How do I get in contact with R.M. Moses about being in one of these films? Well, I think over the past year, um, actors have, have just been... My, my acting network on Twitter has exploded so mm-hmm. it's like now I get at least five DMs a day about actresses or actors nice. wanting jobs so it's hard to always provide something for them and I, I do want to work with most of them but it's, it's hard because I'm only one man I can only do like one film every month or one film every couple months so and how does it come about um, when you budget the whole thing because I know in my head I don't know how it goes but how would you budget a film and for the actresses and the locations etc 
this is one of the reasons I wanted to come on and talk, yeah, because this whole um, budget thing that like, it's, it's, it's a main top topic whenever I go to New York or yeah. LA because everyone wants to know how can you make so many films and like how, like where are you getting the thousands of pounds from, but it's it's literally like you, you make a list of all the resources you can get, whether that is your friend's club or your friend's bar, or whatever. And you know you can get that for free. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to write a story around that. So it's, it's easier instead of writing a story about two guys that climb Mount Everest and you have no <laughs> mountains around you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So true. I feel like all the films I've done can be made with five pounds and that's what I've done. It's, it's like that's none of them that's amazing. None that's cost amazing. Like more than a yeah. hundred pounds if, mm-hmm. if that. I think the most expensive thing is probably petrol and food. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but I, it's, it's like I do want to pay the actors but it's like I can't run I'm not in a yeah. good position if they mm-hmm. want to come on and create Support this magic with and, me yeah. then yeah like we, we can boost each other up and mm-hmm. yeah. create some good work so. it's all about networking really mm. you're just helping each other so it's all good on both ends and you can tell the beauty is in the concepts exactly. in, within your films you yeah. can tell that's the main thing I think of when I think of a film so I think the concepts in which you come out with so yeah I would definitely say that now, this is a topic change mm-hmm. little, slight little topic change mm-hmm. but it's of the times um, what's your views on see the, the room might think I'm going a, a lot more deep now mm-hmm. but um, Black Lives Matter what's your That's opinion true. on it I'm sure a lot of people want to hear what R.M. Moses has to think you know about what? Black Lives Matter last week I, I don't know man it was you know that like, the first video comes online mm. I think it was like Wednesday or something and it's like alright it's sad but you've seen it so many times for America mm. and then the second one coming I was like wow like, that's crazy like yeah. The, one, the one breakfast. with the arm. Yeah, you wake up for breakfast yeah. and it's, there's another one. There's another black man who's cool. died. And then I think it was like Friday and Saturday. I was just sit, I was just sitting down. I didn't do nothing and I was just filled with rage, man. Like for no reason, obviously for a reason. But I was just thinking, right? And then all the, all the timeline stuff was just so emotional and, and everyone was so driven. But I think by yesterday, uh, so as Sunday you could feel like the, the positivity everyone's Definitely. getting involved and they can be like Muslim and Christian and black, white uh, Chinese, anything and, and you see them at the protests and it's good to see everyone uniting and I think that's the most important thing yeah. yeah would you ever make a short film like a quick one now about it or do you not want to go down there yeah um, I, I made a, a documentary called Princess um, yeah, saw that. That came out before I went to America. Um, that's on my Vimeo now, and uh, I've just been looking to do another documentary. It's because it's like if that's my first documentary, and it's got it's got an award, and it's got all these these festival screenings like around the world, and it's like right, like why don't I just do another one instead of doing mm-hmm. a short film? So I've been thinking about doing a documentary. This weekend was important, obviously. So I wanted to get out of there, but I just couldn't because of like my family, cause my little brother's birthday, and mm-hmm. my Crohn's was bad, and it was just it was it was it was a struggle. But I would, I would love to get out of there and go, do something. But I think there's still time to, to for filmmakers to actually do something yeah, for exactly, Black Lives yeah. Matter. So. And I know we spoke about this last time, but I think anyone, anyone that's a new listener too that's listening to this, um, we spoke about Crohn's disease last time. Yeah. Now, I think it is more than relevant to actually say it again so people know exactly what it is and just in general. Just what your... Um, I'll let you go. Um, Crohn's disease is inflammatory of the tissues within your digestive system. So they can swell up and cause you pain from inside your body. Um, There's loads of like side symptoms you can get where a lot of people feel exhausted um, to to like 99% where you're just laying down and there's no reason for you. You could have just come back from gym and you have no energy whatsoever. And I think with growing up when I had it when I was 15, 16, it's like, you always get called lazy and obviously your mum and dad don't know but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know a lot of people went through that I know people that are going through that so it's it's something that needs awareness but at the same time it's from back when I first got it so say 2003 I think it affected less than 1% of the population and now it's affecting 15% of the population so it is growing everyone knows someone has Crohn's or is connected to someone so I think it's it's important to know about it a bit more but Yes, it's, it's, it's great in awareness. Nice, nice. People definitely need to know about that. And also, I wanted to say, because this is like, I feel like this is like, if you're an artist, this is like your first album. With your feature film. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With your feature film. I'm sure you probably racked your brains and said, I don't know which way I'm going to go, what direction I'm going to go. What's the process of thinking about what, what is going to be your first offering to people as your first feature film that people are actually going to go and see? 
I will go and see. Um, Shout out have to you guys seen Reflection, the film with Tola Tariba? It's a boxing film on my Vimeo. It's like three minutes long. Um, that is, we're, we're creating the short film in October. So that I think I wanted to do that as that was one of the first short films I did of the year, and I put that out January third. And it was nice, but it's only three minutes. It's like a trailer more than anything. Mm. So we're doing the short film for the feature film. So we've me and this uh, a guy called Omar Islam, uh, who's a writer, so connected to Blame the Consumer, my production company. We're writing the script for. Uh, it's called Die and Fight. It's not called Reflection anymore, but that's the feature film. And I, when I tell you, it's like it is genuinely like how I, you know, perceive an album. It's like yeah. a, a collection of my best writing ever. It's going to be like a proper, solid film for me, like one of the best I've ever done. So, so is that your goal for this end of this year? Is that your only goal and drive right now? Is there anything else that you're doing? Um, I, I have five more films I've got to shoot between now and November. I'm going to have another premiere at the end of, oh, sorry, the start of December. Hashtag work rate. Right? How do you manage yeah. this? Five films all in. That- I can't even do two essays in you. a month. No, I'm not joking. Seriously. Yeah. No, I, I dropped out of college because I couldn't write essays. So it's it's mm. it's something like when you're passionate to write something, you can just do whatever. You yeah. Can, like write yeah. a thousand words in like two minutes if you wanted to. So, um, yeah. Um, by the end of the year, I would have. I think I would have made 26 short films in the space of two years. Wow. That and is really good. then the whole of the start of next year is just writing and planning for the feature film hopefully we get into production by the summer um, a lot of private investors are involved so we're just getting ready for that man it's going to be good this is going to be good yeah. would you um, have you in, in your long term goals are you planning to do like a real like two hour long film like do you see yourself doing that yeah that's the, that's the feature film that oh okay yeah, that's, that's yeah, sorry a bit dopey <laughs> <a bit. laughs> no a lot of people don't know like the feature film means like the long two hour film yeah. that you see yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know why but yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah are you thing. excited for that process yeah 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 I've, I'm not really used to big crews and stuff so it's, it's going to be a new experience but at the same time it's not going to overwhelm me I know what I've got to do so yeah I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So you're going to be directing everything, producing everything. Yeah, that's going to be I'm gonna amazing. I'm going to have another producer on board. Um, yeah. Uh, I probably won't do the cinematography just because you know, and I, I can't edit it either because it's, it's going to be too long. But um, yeah. I wanted uh, to talk about your cinematography because it is amazing. Yeah. I love the way you shoot and the way the scenes go from each other. Like it's so smooth. And as well as what um, the image of your films and your short films, they're just so smooth. And I'm just thinking, how do you make it like that? Because, you know, not a lot of people can get it like that. I don't know. I think it, I was saying outside, it's, it's with, within the creative field, I feel like um, trial and error is the best way to yeah. progress. Mm-hmm. You can't come out of uni and done a three-year course in TV and film and expect to like be the next Spielberg. Like, Dab you your way to... into the um, big room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I feel like you just need to get get, get the work under your belt. I feel um, I, I had like a, um, a rule a rule of thumb is that you're an amateur until you've made ten films. So with short films, I feel like I'm 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 at a good pace now. I know yeah. I, I've got to do. I know that every time I release something, it's going to be of good quality. But now stepping into doing the feature films, it's like I need to get the next ten done and see where that takes me. And also, I think so. I can see so you're passionate about something else. I've seen on your tweets so many a times. I even saw John Boyega even like one of your tweets, and then you sent like yeah. a diss like thing towards <laughs> him saying, "Don't come to my premiere looking better than me," yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm gonna try. Mm. Just let you know, <laughs> I'm gonna try.